Yes, I feel very embarrassed to be standing in the shoes of Lord Davith this morning. Uh, we only heard very minutes ago that he wouldn't be able to come, really. Um, his assistant had sent his speech, so I'm afraid you'll have to put up with me reading it. But um, Lord Davith was uh, the, the first presiding officer of the Welsh Assembly. That's like the speaker of our parliament equivalent here in Wales. He was leader of the Welsh uh, National Party, Plaid Cymru for many years, been a member of Parliament, House of Lords, he's a Privy Councillor, very um, keen on environmental issues and very supportive of sustainable development in Wales as well. So I feel highly inadequate reading this on behalf of Sir David, but I'll, I'll do that quickly so that you can hear what he was going to say. And he's put this speech together himself to give you an idea of how um, au fait he is with the all environment and sustainability issues. He says, uh, whilst it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to Wales, it gives me even greater pleasure to welcome you to Bangor University. Lord David is the Chancellor of Bangor University, amongst many other positions. To have Europe's finest ecosystem thinkers here, in Wales' preeminent seat of learning, is a remarkable honour, and I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to offer a few words of introduction and welcome. It happened so soon, we haven't even got a picture of Sadabu. We didn't have time to get one, I'm afraid. So <laughs> the blank, there's a blank screen there, I'm afraid. So I welcome chairs and members of the, of, um, the European Advisory Councils, Environmental Advisory Councils from across Europe. And additionally, there's even a delegate who's come here from India in the audience today for the conference. So I need not lecture you on the importance of ecosystems or on how vital it is that knowledge and experience is shared across international boundaries. That said, I also feel that I must set my later comments on Wales in a more international context. So please indulge me for a few moments. You will know that in 2007, global leaders took the important decisions to support a global study on the economics of biodiversity loss, the Economics of Ecosystems and Biodiversity Study, or TEEBS as it's known. This study concluded that the invisibility of nature's services in economic results and calculations has led to widespread neglect of our natural capital. I would like to recall a few lines of its final report. We are consuming the world's biodiversity and ecosystems at an unsustainable rate, and this is already starting to have serious socioeconomic impacts. If we are to find solutions to the problems we face, we need to understand what is happening to biodiversity and ecosystems and how these changes affect the goods and services they provide. We then need to look at the way we can use economic tools to ensure that future generations can continue to enjoy the benefits of these goods and services. This was an important message. The report also concluded that despite the difficulties of building economic tools that take account of ecosystem services, there are great examples from across the world where this is beginning to be done and from which important lessons can be learned. The sharing of best practice between nations and organisations is essential in the effort to develop new policy mechanisms. Mechanisms that ensure that the global ambition missed in 2010 to halt biodiversity loss is not missed again in 2020. In the UK, the TEEB study in part led to the detailed work being completed as part of the National Ecosystems Assessment which you'll be hearing a little bit about as well during the conference. That was uh, to first assess and then to value ecosystems. This work was an example of the progress that we can make when there is collaboration between all sectors. The work of the NEA, the National Ecosystem Assessment, particularly its reports on the ecosystems of Wales, is something the Environment and Sustainability Committee will be taking account of in its inquiry into sustainable land management in Wales something I will return to in a few moments. So David is chair of that Welsh um, Assembly Environment and Sustainability Committee. In the Welsh context, the Valuing Our Environment study for Wales calculated the environment of Wales provides six billion directly to the Welsh economy every year, contributes to one in six Welsh jobs, and um, about 820 million a year in tourism spending and it also accounts for 15% of goods and services produced in Wales. That was a traditional study. It probably vastly underestimates, if you were to value the wider ecosystem services, of course, of how much the environment provides for us. 
So the timing of this conference could not have been better. In the past year, we have seen the establishment of Natural Resources Wales, an organisation that has been designed with the ecosystems approach in mind. This new organisation has the potential to act as a catalyst for the development of an ecosystems approach to managing our natural resources. In the next year, we will be considering proposals, that's in Sadoa's committee, for new Welsh laws in relation to the environment, planning and sustainable development. This is in the government's legislative programme. Um, sustainable development law now known as the Future Generations Law uh, um, Act that's being developed. So as chair of the committee that oversees the minister responsible, I take great interest in monitoring the development of Natural Resources Wales. In particular, we want to see how Natural Resources Wales meets the challenge of balancing its duty to promote Wales's environment, society and economy with regulating industry and protecting natural resources and biodiversity. Also, we will want to see how it will manage its role as an agency of government but also as a provider of independent advice. I am certain that success in meeting these challenges will, re will rely on its application of the ecosystems approach. Additionally, we as a committee will be tasked with scrutinising the forthcoming legislation. This legislation must be bold in ambition and bravely delivered. It has the potential to put Wales on the front foot in enabling the ecosystems approach and delivering the benefits that this can accrue. In international terms, it can place Wales as a leader. If we do not take this opportunity, if our approach in Wales is lacking in ambition, then the economic, social and environmental consequences could be severe. It is an opportunity we cannot afford to miss. The Assembly Committee that I chair has prepared itself for these tasks. We have undertaken inquiry work into the reforms of the common agricultural and fisheries policies, our domestic agri-environment scheme, marine policy and energy and planning policy in Wales, to name only a few. From all of these works, we see a constant message. Uh, we must approach the challenge of managing the competing and increasing demands on our land, sea and air through an ecosystems approach. We are currently undertaking work in relation to sustainable land management. Whilst only at an early stage in this inquiry process, the evidence is emerging uh, that is emerging is suggesting that there is much good practice in taking an ecosystems approach to land management. However, these good examples stand somewhat in isolation from one another. There is a need for these to be brought together and for the good work to be shared and transferred to land managers. The focus of today's conference is apt for the question of how we turn science into policy how we turn innovation and hard learnt lessons into practical action on the ground is central to our inquiry work. We want to know how we can transfer the knowledge from our research centres to our farmers, fishers, conservationists and foresters on the ground. If you arrive at an answer today, please let me know, says Sir David. <laughs> Establishing markets and monetising ecosystem services is another, another challenge that has yet to be adequately addressed. My early impression is that if we are able to convince land managers to move towards more sustainable practices, then we will need to communicate the benefits of such a change and also the disbenefits of not changing in financial terms. Third emerging theme, and one that must be central to all our thinking, scientists and policy makers alike, is that the understanding of ecosystems and ecosystem services is far from universal. More work must be done by us all to standardise this understanding and communicate it to the public. So finally, I will be looking at the outcomes from this conference with great interest with a view con to considering your work as part of the Environment and Sustainability Committee's inquiry into sustainable land management, which in turn, I hope, will lead to shaping public policy in Wales. I hope that we benefit from your presence here today and that your discourse forms part of the national debate that we're having here in Wales. I trust you will enjoy your time here in Bangor, and I look forward to meeting some of you. Well, <laughs> he won't be meeting you today, I'm afraid, as we heard, but uh, that's Sir David's speech. Thanks for, for listening.